Welcome. So this set of videos is going to be directed at working with data that has become available as a result of the um, coronavirus. And the goal is going to be to build a little web application using Python. Now, the motivation for this is an example from Johns Hopkins um, University that has where they have built this dashboard um, that has a couple of tables, a map, uh, a little breadcrumb guy that we can change here. Um, but I want to walk through how we can use the data, actually use this data that they've provided and um, build a similar kind of uh, dashboard or web application using Flask and um, Pandas. Uh, for the maps, we'll use Folium. And yeah, that's my goal. So. I'm going to try to walk through everything from scratch. In this video, we'll just go over building a little table like this. So that'll involve getting the data um, and filtering and structuring it so that we can look at just the top confirmed cases based on uh, country. So again, we're going to use the data that Johns Hopkins has provided. They have a We have a link to their GitHub account here. Um, I'll follow this link. And I am going to use inside of this COVID-19 data. Um, there's a few different options, but we're going to choose this daily report. And you can see that this is March 28th. So the most updated version is March 28th. I'm going to grab the URL to the raw version of this. OK, so I'm just copying this URL and we'll be able to use this URL to actually load the data set into pandas. So first we're going to import pandas and now I'll go ahead and read in that file just pasting that URL in the read CSV function and now we can see that we have a data frame with information about uh, a lot of locales. It's not just, this is not just the United States and this isn't by country. We actually have information about individual uh, locales in a number of countries, as well as their latitude and longitudes, um, confirmed deaths, recovered, active, and uh, we have an abbreviation for all of these names. So again, the first thing that we want to do is look at this confirmed column. And we want to choose the top number, or you know, maybe we'll use 15, um, and sort that based on what are the largest. To do this, the easiest way, or at least what I think is the easiest way, is to use some built-in pandas functionality for sorting the largest numbers of a column. If we look at the corona data frame, we can use the n largest method. And let's say we want the top 15. We can just pass the name of the column that we want those 15 largest from. So here you see that we get back the 15 results. And we, we actually took the whole, now we're getting back the whole data frame, but again, some of these are countrywide, some of these are individual cities. So we have New York City, we also have Westchester, New York, both of these. Now, if we're trying to replicate this Johns Hopkins example, we want to aggregate it based on countries. So that's just one further step. Before we can find the largest number, we, have to, we want to aggregate based on this column, the country region. So to do this, we'll use the group by functionality. And again, we'll start with our data frame. We're going to group by the country region column. And what we want to do is we want to total all of these um, confirmed cases within these groups. So we're going to sum each of those regions and then we get back a data frame that has the index of each of those groupings, in this case, the country or region. 
and um, the sum of any of the numeric features that we had. So we don't really care about the total for the latitude and longitudes, but we probably do care about these confirmed deaths recovered and active. So if we wanted, we could subset the confirmed deaths recovered and active. All right, and maybe we'll save this um, as a new data frame that we'll call uh, by country. So any of the largest values that we want, now we have this data frame that's grouped, we can sort. So by country, we can look at the n largest, uh, 15 confirmed. And we see that the US has 12, uh, 121,478, closely followed by Italy, then China. And so we could sort this based on any of these features. And really, if we're just looking for one of them, like we're trying to build this table that has the confirmed cases by region, we'll just be looking at the confirmed column. So after we sort this or before, uh, we could just subset it based on that confirmed column. So here's our confirmed data frame. Now the idea is, is that we want to, th that's the end, we've got the table that we want, but we want to be able to also kind of modularize this. And you, we, our goal is going to be to package this in a little application. So um, we want to write a function that will do everything. That'll hit that URL, get the data frame, um, group it and add and grab the top 15 confirmed cases. So we, I'm just going to go ahead and group these cells together that did everything and eliminate anything that's just a display. So I don't need to look at the top two rows anymore. Um, so this is extracting the data frame. This is grouping it by countries, and then this would be finding the largest. And I'll save that as um, CDF for confirmed data frame. All right, and that's everything. So then I can just grab all of these pieces and put them inside of a function. And let me call this function find top, um, we'll say confirmed for now, and we'll set n equal to 15, paste our code from above, and then we will return that data frame, the CDF, the confirmed data frame. This argument that we've set, n equals 15, maybe we want to, instead of the top 15, maybe we want the top 10. So we'll set um, that as a variable and let the user pass it. We'll default to 15. And what this means now is that if we call this function, we should be returned a data frame with the top 15 cases. Okay, so that's our first, our first goal.